This video is sponsored by Naked VPN. Unlike other VPNs that try to hide your internet usage, Naked VPN emails your internet usage history to everyone in your contacts. Let them know you're freaky with Naked VPN. Hey folks, MIB here, and when you run a multi-million dollar YouTube channel like I don't, you need to have a strong presence on social media. That's why I've decided it was time to get myself a social media manager. And even better, I hired within! Well, I mean, I only have one employee, but here she is! My new social media manager, Clickbait. Hold on one second. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Hashtag blast. Oh. I've given Clickbait the password to all of my social media accounts, and she'll be working really hard to raise our awareness about our wait, endeavors. Wait, 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 MIB, I have a new app. It's gonna show us what our kid's gonna look like. Are you ready? Ready? Look how cute our kid is. Aww. Right now, let's make a hand baby. Great work, CB. Definitely post that on my Google Plus page. Anyway, today we're talking about crossovers. Godzilla has been around for over 65 years now, but the amount of time he's crossed over with other intellectual properties is surprisingly limited. On today's show, we're gonna look at five official crossovers that feature Godzilla. So let's go ahead and get started. Whoa, 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 hold on, MIB. It's world famous YouTuber Brandon Tennelt. What are you doing here, man? Don't tell me you're gonna do a whole episode about crossovers and not do a YouTube crossover. I mean, isn't that kind of a missed opportunity? So how about I guest host this one with you? Uh, yeah, but what do I need a guest host for? I've got clickbait. Right, clickbait? I'm gonna just put that cute little dog face on, but I gotta line it up to the dots. Hold on one second. Never mind. Welcome to our special guest host, YouTuber Brandon Tennell. We're gonna talk about five times Godzilla has crossed over with other properties, but first we need to establish some rules. Right, rule number one, the crossover must be with a property not owned by Toho, the owners of Godzilla. So we're not counting inner Toho crossovers like when Godzilla had that bromance with Zone Fighter. However, it is okay for properties where Toho handled the distribution. Rule number two, we're not counting times Godzilla met real life people. Sorry, Charles Barkley. Three, the crossover must happen in some type of medium that is currently accessible. So that Godzilla Gamera stage show I mentioned in a previous video, that's out. And last, Godzilla and the other characters must appear together. This rules out the PlayStation 4 game City Shrouded in Shadow, which features Godzilla, Ultraman, Gamera, and more, but never at the same time or even during the same level. Hybrid characters are also okay. With these rules in mind, let's get to the good stuff. Clickbait, do you think you could both manage my social media and the countdown? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Five! Godzilla and Sanrio characters. Sanrio is a Japanese company that focuses on creating products for the cute side of Japanese pop culture, referred to as kawaii. It was founded in 1960, a point when Godzilla had only appeared in two feature films thus far. Sanrio has a ridiculously huge catalog of original characters, the most popular of which being Hello Kitty, who's achieved mainstream success in both America and Japan. In the mid-2010, Sanrio and Toho began teaming up to cross over Godzilla with some of their popular characters. Godzilla can be seen playing in the clouds with the Twin Stars, cozying up to Pom Pomperin, and playing with My Melody and Flat the Mouse. And of course, Godzilla is featured in art alongside Kitty White herself. In this piece, she's somehow convinced Godzilla to wear one of her bows while she sits on his tail. And they're both flipping me off as if to say, Yeah, this is happening and a Transformers crossover isn't. F*** you. Well, and if you think that's strange, take a look at Hello Kitty King Ghidorah. This is included in the third wave of what's called the Narikiri Hello Kitty Collection, a set of keychains featuring Hello Kitty dressed as popular tokusatsu characters. And if a three-headed Hello Kitty Ghidorah is too much for you, there's a Godzilla in the collection as well. What a time to be alive. And we haven't even discussed Gudetama yet. Gudetama is a depressed egg yolk 
that really took off in Japan in the past few years. So naturally, his ass is always hanging out, wiggling around. Don't care. Can I go now? As you can see, his depression has rubbed off on Mothra. We have a depressed King Ghidorah. There's a Mecha Godzilla. Even Godzilla can't conjure up enough energy to go stomp on a city. What happened? Did they all just watch the Godzilla Netflix anime? Look at these stuffed toys. Look how deflated Godzilla looks. And Rodan looks like he's saying, oh my. Just remember that Toho turned down a crossover with Gamera, but they were okay with a bare-ass depressed egg. I feel like four could be trending, right? Should we trend four? Like, let's trend four. Godzilla and Marvel superheroes. In 1977, Marvel Comics was able to license Godzilla for a two-year, 24-issue series. They used this opportunity to write Godzilla into the Marvel Universe and have him interact with Marvel greats like the Incredible Hulk, Galactus, and a whole bunch of established Marvel monsters. Yeah, Brandon, Godzilla didn't actually interact with any of those characters during this run. Wait, so they had Godzilla, but they didn't have him fight guys like Fin Fang Foom? Well, who the hell did they put him up against then? Dum Dum Dugan! You know, that guy with the cigar and the bowler hat? Are you f are you kidding me? Dum Dum Dugan sounds like an 80s WWF wrestler. Like the main event is Bam Bam Bigelow versus Dum Dum Dugan. And maybe Hacksaw Jim Duggan's in there somewhere. The good news is that over the 24-issue run, Godzilla did have some run-ins with popular Marvel heroes. It's not as many as you'd think, but they're there. You've got a team called The Champions, with Angel, Iceman, Black Widow, and Hercules. That was a real team? Kind of sounds like you're just naming random Marvel characters. I think even the Power Pack is more famous than those guys are. One time Godzilla shrunk down a little bit and took on the Fantastic Four. And toward the end of the series, he took on the Avengers. Okay, well did Godzilla at least meet Spider-Man? Please tell me he met Spider-Man. He did! Okay, good. For one panel! And technically they didn't meet. God f***ing damn it! I've gone on record about what I enjoy about this Marvel series, but when you think about it, there was so much stuff they could have done that they just didn't. Like, why not have Godzilla face an army of giant monsters sent from Monster Island by the Mole Man? Or what about all those giant monsters from the early issues of Tales of Suspense, like Clag, Goom, Craw? Are you naming monsters or are you choking on a fishbone? Godzilla's official comic run at Marvel ended in 1979 with the Big G walking into the sunset. The series is worth checking out, but in terms of Godzilla penetrating the Marvel Universe, this comic run only really scratches the surface. Godzilla and Evangelion the worlds of Godzilla and Evangelion have collided more than a few times, and it's fair to say that this started when Hideaki Anno, creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion, signed on to co-direct Shin Godzilla. As an April Fool's joke, and to promote his involvement with Shin Godzilla, Toho posted this crossover art on April 1st, 2016. This visual featuring the Big G and Unit 01 might have started as a prank on us fans, but soon after, we started to get some actual, official crossover merchandise. That's right, fans were soon treated to figures that combined elements from both franchises, including special releases from X Plus like these two Kiryus, as well as this Ava Godzilla hybrid that'll spring to life and murder you if you say his name three times. Other collectibles include this SH Monster Arts Ava Unit 1 colored Godzilla, and figurines like this one of Rei holding a Godzilla. And of course, there's more merchandise we can cover, but we still have two more entries on this countdown to do. Plus, we want to get to the real big crossover event between these two, a ride at Universal Studios Japan called Godzilla vs. Evangelion, the real 4D. This temporary attraction opened on May of 2019. Guests play the role of an observational team sent by the government to observe strange electrical disturbances. They ride in a special aircraft that's soon attacked by Shin Godzilla. Evangelion units appear to fight off the Big G, but things get even more intense when a new form of King Ghidorah descends from the sky to join the Rumble. Universal Studios also offered some notable souvenirs for the ride, such as special mugs, trinkets, and so on. And also these incredible Unit 01 and Mechagodzilla heads that are actually popcorn buckets. 
Best of all, soft vinyl figures of both Shin Godzilla and the new form of King Ghidorah were offered as well. With this crossover still going strong, it's safe to say that we might see some more Godzilla and Evangelion together. And now that Anno is involved with a new Ultraman movie, who knows what kind of crossover surprises we might see in the future. Two, it's like a peace sign. Two, peace. Godzilla and Hamtaro. You know, whenever I think of Godzilla, a giant radioactive city destroying dinosaur that began as an allegory for the horrors of nuclear weapons, I think the most logical thing to pair him with is a small, adorable hamster. Yeah, obviously. And that's exactly what happened in the early 2000s. For anyone who doesn't know, Hamtaro is a series of Japanese storybooks and manga aimed at small children. This little guy started his career in 1997, and when he's not busy getting lost up Richard Gere's ass, you might also find him in video games, anime series, and even some full-length movies. Hamtaro films were distributed theatrically by Toho, and some of the movies were double-billed with new Godzilla films that were being released theatrically at the same time. As part of the promotion, movie theaters would offer small trinkets like these to the patrons. This started in 2001 with the movies GMK, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, and Totoko Hamtaro, the movie, Adventures in Ham Ham Land. That's a sentence I just said. This cross-promotion continued the following year with a pairing of Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, and Trotting Ham Taro the movie, Ham Ham Hamuja, the Captive Princess. Or, as us true Ham Taro fans call it, THT MHHH TCP. And then finally in 2003, Tokyo SOS was paired with... Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Totoko Ham Taro the movie, Ham Ham Grand Prix, Miracles in Aurora Valley, Ribbon Chan's Close Call. I'm not sure if I just read you the movie title or the entire script. But I do know these little goji hams are f***ing adorable. Number one. Number one. All right. Hey, if Clickbait's doing two jobs today, does that mean you're paying her two salaries? Quiet, you. Godzilla and Ultraman. And Gundam. And Kamen Rider. To this day, franchises like Gundam, Ultraman, and Kamen Rider are amongst the most popular IPs in Japan. But did you know that these characters have been regularly teaming up in video games? The Compati Hero series is a category of games developed by Bon Presto that started all the way back in 1990 with a sumo wrestling game for the Famicom. This 8-bit game features super deformed versions of the characters and their friends and foes, all living in one universe like a Japanese version of Toontown. For the next couple decades, dozens of new titles were made for the Compati Hero series, including side-scrollers, beat-em-ups, sports games, role-playing games, you name it. And in 30 years of these games, Godzilla and other Toho monsters have only appeared twice. The first time was in 1992 with Battle Soccer Field no Hasha for the 16-bit Super Famicom in Japan. The second game to feature Godzilla was Battle Baseball for the 8-bit Famicom. This game came out in 1993, and it's exactly what you think it is. Popular Japanese characters playing baseball. Soccer and baseball? How the hell is this the number one crossover on the list? I mean, yeah, I guess it's cool to see all these characters share a screen together, but I feel like this crossover could have been a lot more exciting. Uh, I'm glad you said that, Brandon! In 1993, the same year as the release of Battle Baseball, a Super Famicom game was released called The Great Battle 3. It's a Compati Hero series beat-em-up with a medieval motif. For one reason or another, this game was also adapted into a manga. I ordered a copy of the manga from Japan, and when I opened it, to my complete shock, I found that the story begins with the characters playing baseball. And Godzilla's right there, along with the other Toho monsters. So there's an official manga out there that has Ultraman, Gundam, Kamen Rider, and Godzilla all together. It's like the Ready Player One of manga. This little baseball game lasts the first few pages of the manga before the Toho characters exit the story and the main adventure begins. Honestly, this little comic here is one of my favorite things in the world. Somebody should make a manga of me, you, and Chris Kaisen playing baseball. Yeah, man. Yeah, I gotta say, it's kind of nice having someone else here who's, like, engaged with the show. 
Do you want to guest host permanently? Ooh, yeah, I'd love to, but uh, I'm in Canada, and the long-distance YouTube charges up here are outrageous, so that's all for now. Until next time. Did he just... Did he just leave? Uh, well, I, I, I guess it's just you and me again, clickbait. Hashtag butts, my favorite. Hashtag my most favorite butt. Hashtag butt jokes. Hashtag butt girl. Yeah, she's really messing with my brand. Everybody knows I'm a boob guy. Well, goodbye. <laughs> What Godzilla crossover would you love to see? Leave a comment and perhaps I will engage you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to support our channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you stay up to date on it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a video.